Okay, this video is going to be me installing a bilge pump on a 2019 SeaDoo GTX 300. Um, I'm actually done with it, and I'm going to apologize for the video already because I had to film it all myself, so it was a little hard to film what I was doing. I think the most important part of this is actually the electrical connections, and I want to have links to the little connectors you need if you're going to wire it like I did. Also, um, be sure to watch the end of this video because I kind of messed up on putting a fuse on the ground side or the neutral side and ended up making a quote unquote uh, bus bar like the SeaDoo uh, OEM pump would have. Um, so this is the final. Here's the ejection port here for the uh, bilge pump. So it came out pretty good. I think the black looks nice with uh, all the black I got going on here. But anyway. Again, this is not the best shot video. Uh, I think the most, again, the most important thing is the uh, electrical connection. So I hope this helps you. All right, it looks like this is going to work. Um, the pump just snugly fits up underneath the IBR controller. So depending on your ski, if you don't have the IBR, um, that would be that's, that would open up a lot of space. But um, also, even if you have another CD model, the RXTX or something that doesn't have depth finder, you don't have the transducer here to deal with either, being in your way right in front of it. So, it looks like the zip tie will work. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I don't have it fastened down yet. Got to do the wiring. I did want to face it the other direction. Uh, there's a test for the float on the other side of the pump that you can't see and you can't reach. But... This will not go underneath the IBR, uh, turn the other direction. It's, it's too tall. So um, I'm stuck with it this way. Um, I think I'm going to route the, um, the hose up here and probably right here bring it out. And I have a 90 degree that I'm going to put in here uh, so it'll be pointing down towards the hose coming up so uh, got to get the electrical done and uh, then hook up the hose and we'll be done all right well now that I know where the pump is going I am going to go ahead and do the wiring outside of the uh, outside of the hole um, I got some 16 gauge four conductor I'm going to be using I didn't need four conductor but it's what they had um, I'm going to go ahead, even though I'm going to wire this directly to the fuse box on the float side of this, um, I'm going to go ahead and wire up the, uh, the full-time run on it as well. I'm just not going to actually hook it to anything on the other end. I may add a switch in the future, and you may want to. Um, this one is just going to stay hot when the ski's turned on because I'm going to wire it directly to the fuse box. Uh, this one's going to go to nothing uh, until I possibly put a switch in and I can manually turn the pump on and off if I want. This is going to be wired directly to the negative terminal on the battery. So let me get this end done and then I'm going to set it back in the hull and figure out how long the other end needs to be and then do those connectors and then I got the um, some conduit to put it in. I'm going to solder the connections, then I'm going to put a little bit of the uh, Loctite Marine adhesive sealant on it, and then I'm going to put shrink tube on it. So let me get it going. Okay, it's a bit of a mess, but I got all the connectors done and shrink wrapped, um, or heat shrink. And the white you see coming out of the end is the Loctite Marine uh, sealant. So um, I just coated it and then slid the, um, the heat shrink up over top of that and then shrunk it down and so the uh, sealant just kind of shot out the end so I'm pretty confident I got a watertight seal it's just a little bit messy the green wire is not going to be connected to anything for now and I have one more uh, heat shrink here I'm going to put over all the connectors coat all of it with sealant and uh, then shrink it all down alright that was extremely messy but I got it done so now I have all the connectors um, they've been uh, shrink wrap or heat shrink tube and um, once and then I have another one encasing all of them again with the sealant inside of there so I'm pretty confident I got a good uh, a, a good connection and B a nice watertight seal so I want to drop the pump in 
the ski and then I'm going to route the wire around and figure the links out and put the other connectors on. Okay. Uh, I got it set down in there and I went ahead and zip tied it in one little spot here just to hold the wire. I'm going to follow the existing wiring harnesses around the engine and come up this way to the fuse box which I already have loose here. Uh, it just has two little, it just snaps in right here. So on the bottom side of the fuse box um, is little rubber plugs uh, and I have to remove one. Uh, might be hard to see here but right where my fingers point in is a little contact for a fuse and on the other side you don't see one all right I have the piece that is the contact that I'll be sliding in from the back side of uh, the fuse block here the uh, this like I said was already uh, CD went ahead and pre-wired for a bilge pump and the bilge pump that they sell comes with a little clip that slides in here so um, also just so I didn't forget to do it uh, this little this little rubber stopper here, I went ahead and slid onto the wire that will be going into the fuse box. Um, so once I, I put the clip on here, and I'll show you that before I do it, and uh, push it into the fuse box, and then this I will push up behind it to uh, seal it. Alright, so let me get my plug on. Oh, and on the ground wire, I'm going to be running that... Uh, I'm going to be running it directly to the battery. There is a way to wire it up here, but I do not have the needed jumper. Actually, now that I look at it, I might have another idea. I might try something else. So let me take a look at this. All right, I got my conduit on just to keep it from being all spaghetti. And I got these little connectors on that are going to slide into the fuse box and I got my little rubber stoppers that go in behind them. I'm going to try to film me putting these in. I don't know how well that's going to go. But, um, oh, also, on the back of the fuse box, uh, CDU tells you to pull the little plugs out of the back, but I found if you use a very small, any kind of little small, really small screwdriver or something and push through the front you can just easily push that little stopper out the back that's blocking it so um, I'm gonna push this uh, this one out here in the top right corner this I found out is uh, neutral or uh, negative on going to the battery um, so CDU wants you to and their instructions to go to this third one over and then put a jumper over to that I, I don't know why I'm going to go ahead and put another connector in, and I'm just going to fuse both sides, which isn't a bad idea anyway. So I'm going to have uh, the, the, the hot down here and the ground up here. And uh, let me see if I can get those in there. Okay, chances are this is going to be really hard to see, but I got the ground one in perfectly right here. So now you can see there's, hopefully you can see there's two metal tabs here for my um, fuse to go in for the negative side. Now right over here, I'm going to slide in the one for the positive side. So I just kind of got to look at it, which way it goes in. Okay, it goes in this way. And it is, which hole is it? It's right up here next to that one. Okay, and slide it in. Of course, this one doesn't want to be easy like the negative was. I'm not going to be able to film this. I'm sorry, but basically you push them in and you hear them click. So I'm going to turn this off so I can use both hands to get my head in here. Okay, there's just no way I could film me doing any of this. It's just too tight down in here. But uh, the little rubber plugs that I that I uh, put on the wires, I put a little dielectric grease on them and just pop them right into place. So now you can see I got two contacts for a fuse here. And two contacts for a fuse here so this is the positive side and this should be the negative um, I didn't mention this before but before you do anything disconnect the battery negative first then the positive so I'm gonna snap the um, fuse box back in place here hook the battery up then I'm gonna put the fuses in and we'll see if this works okay so I've now added two fuses this 5 amp and this 5 amp. The pump actually said 6 amp. 
only did they make a six amp, so I went with a five. Uh, it's a three amp uh, pump anyway, so five should be fine. Um, so everything's done, so I'm going to do the test. Oop, it doesn't work, which I didn't think it would because the ski should be on to power it. So let me turn it on. All right, now the pump should work. Ha <laughs> ha. So when the the ski would have to be on for the pump to work. Um, so that's basically the on off switch. So now it's all left to do is to um, go ahead and fasten my wire uh, down, zip tie them, set the pump down, and then drill a hole in the hole. That's always. All right, well, hole was through the hole. So uh, I got a 90 degree black. I thought that would look better than the white since I got black on here. So boom. I use the Loctite adhesive behind this. Tighten it down, connect my hose on the other side, and I'm pretty much done with this. Um, that was the highest point I felt like I could put this, the outlet. I had this lip to contend with here. I didn't want to get up to where it would hit it. I missed it by about, about half an inch from interfering. So, not bad. Uh, the pump is not the prettiest install ever. I, I I don't really love that, but you know what? It's better not having one at all. And uh, I got it zip tied pretty good. It's not going anywhere. It's kind of wedged up under the IBR controller. So, um, and I don't like the way the hose is right up against the uh, depth uh, transducer. So I'm probably going to put something to insulate that. And I'm going to run. Okay. <laughs> got to run the um, this behind. I don't want it too close to the uh, exhaust here. So. I'm going to finish this up. Alright, I am complete. I just have to put the back deck back on and the seats on and we're good to go. Uh, found a good path for the hose to take to stay away from the um, exhaust. And I can't really see anything anymore. Got all the uh, hoses back in. Got the uh, Got it routed around, got it all zip tied in, so it's good to go. Um, now, you, it depended on your ski, this is more for a um, uh, GTX or the ST3 hole, uh, the Sea Doos. Uh, but you might, if you don't have a Sea Doo, you, you might just have to go and uh, wire directly to the battery. If you do have a Sea Doo, the RXTX or the, the GTX, uh, I'm going to list all the little connectors and um, plugs and all that to, to wire directly into the fuse box. So you don't have to do that. It makes for a really neat job. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with the wiring. Not super thrilled with the mount of the uh, pump, but uh, not a lot of room to deal with. I decided to go non-OEM because the pump that SeaDoo sells... It runs full time, so if the ski is awake, the pump's running. Uh, I don't like that. Number one, and number two, it's $150 plus shipping and whatever else. And I did all of this for about oh gosh, I want to say it's, it's definitely under 70 bucks. So it's under half the price. And it took me quite a bit of time to do, but it's just it's just a pain to work on one of these things anywhere. So. You can look below for the links for parts if you're interested. So I hope this helps you if you're thinking about putting in a bilge pump. And if you're not thinking about it, you probably should be. Um, that, this is my first thing to do to this. And to my opinion, it's one of the most important. Um, you can see some of my previous videos. I put one in a Kawasaki. And uh, it saved me. Uh, it, uh, I would have sank again if it had not been for that pump. Had the shaft seal go out on me. So, um, anyway, hope this helps you. Okay, to eliminate the fuse on the negative side, I just took a 30 amp fuse, I think. It doesn't really matter, but I used a higher um, amp fuse and took a razor blade and sliced it this way and this way. So this little section here will come off. 
Then I took a second fuse and cut the leg off and laid it right across here and soldered it here, here, and then took a um, heat shrink and slid over the whole thing and heat shrunk it. So, uh, and then removed the fuse on the negative side and plugged in this as kind of a do-it-yourself bus bar going with the uh, CDU manual for the installation of their pump. I'm also going to put the link to their manual below.